Okay? So I'm going to introduce some probability rules. There are mainly two, or you can say there are three if you include the mutual exclusion, but there are actually two. The addition rule and the complementary rule, which I'll talk about just now. Okay? Now, the addition rule, we start with the addition rule. Now, according to the addition rule, if I have a Venn diagram, okay, obviously, with two events, event A and event B, like that, okay? It's important for you to know that the total in the sample space, okay, obviously, is the, is the sum of all the elements in A only, then the intersection, then B only, or if there's anything outside. But in this case, let's assume there is nothing which which is outside those two uh, events. What happens is the number of elements okay, in A or B, the number of elements in A or B, what that means when you say A or B, we are saying if you add all the elements in this area, let me just highlight it. Okay. Let me just use uh, different colors here. Just highlight. So we have got our intersection. That's the intersection, isn't it? Okay. Then we also have this area here. This area. Here. That area it represents A only. Okay? This area represents what? A only. Then yellow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe yellow. Okay. Maybe yellow. Maybe yellow. So let me be trying to talk. It's fine if this is not the same. So this area here that I'm shading, that's the area for B only. Okay? That's the area for B only. So if I if, if I have elements, this area here, that's N A. Okay? It will be N A. This one here, that's N B. Okay, right? Are you following that? Okay, when I say NB, I'm talking about the whole area, which includes the intersection, by the way. Okay, NA, please take note here, I didn't say NA only. I said NA, you are also including the what? The intersection. When I say NB, we are also including the intersection. So how many times is the intersection counted? Twice. Are you following? Some of you are not paying attention. I'm just going to show you something. You know the great tools they wrote here, the trial paper, right? There was a great, last week actually, Friday, there was a, a grade 10 question which came. On this, and the bulk of them, they were struggling. This question is, this is the grade 10 question. Exactly the start of the robot. I'm introducing it. It's a grade 10 question. It's not a grade 11 question. It's not a grade 12 question. It's a grade 10 question. This question here. Right? Most of them, they didn't understand this in grade 10. Then, this area here, that's, that's N, A, and B. That's area. Okay? So, if I want to find the total number of elements in A or B, it will be equal to the number of elements in A. Okay? When I say A, I'm talking about the whole circle of A. The whole set for A. Which includes the what? The intersection. Plus the number of elements in B. Okay? Which also includes the what? The intersection. So how many times are we going to count the intersection? Twice. Because of the double counting, 
we have to subtract the intersection once. So this will become minus N A N B. Okay? okay, let me write it nicely there so that uh, nobody will say I can't see the code. So that would be N A N B. We are doing the subtraction because of double counting. So this minus here is because of double counting here. I'm doing this because I want you to understand when you start writing the formula, know where it comes from. Okay? Don't just memorize without understanding the formula. Okay. NA is this whole area. Uh, let me is this whole area. NA is this whole area. Which includes the what? NB is also in this area, which also includes the what? So if I say NA plus NB, it means there are some elements that I'm counting what? Two times. So if I want to find the total of A or B, I need to subtract once the intersection because I have double counted here. Okay. Following that, right? Then, then, from there now, once, do you remember when I first introduced the how to calculate probabilities? I told you that the probability of any event, the probability of any event P e is equal to, let's do this. Okay, let me not write it down. I didn't want to put the circuit here. But I knew that if I put the circuit first, I need to move uh, this, the image in which I have there. Don't worry, I'll do it here. So the probability of an event E is equal to the number of elements in the e, number of elements in the favorable event divided by the total in the sample space. So, if I divide this by the total in the sample space, I'll get probabilities. So, I'll end up having this formula now. This becomes P A or B is equal to P A plus P B minus P A and B. By the total in the sample space, to get probability, remember you divide by the total in the sample space. This is just the number. Like say in this class there are 26 elements of two twenty. Right? Once I say P A or B means 26 is the numerator. But what's the total in the class? 26. If say I want the learner, how many of you are doing uh, accounting? Raise your hand. Accounting quickly. Accounting. One, two, three, four, right? So if I want to calculate the probability of those who are doing accounting. The A, A or B is going to be 4, but when N is going to be 26. So that's the total in the class. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the moment you divide by N is, it turns into what? Probability. Right? Yes. Now, this formula, we can also make that. P, A, and B, the subjects. If we make, if you make the, if you make the, the P and B the subject, okay, before I do that, I just want to keep telling you that this is the famous addition rule of probabilities. That's the famous addition rule of probabilities. You need it up, up to metric. Okay? You can encounter some questions on that. 
how to match it. But this formula can also be written by making P A and B the subject. You can write P A and B. Okay, you just swap these two. Am I right from, from an equations perspective? Am I talking to myself now? From a from an from your knowledge of equations, if I want to make P A and B the subject, I'll just take the minus P A and B to the left to become what? Positive. It then take the P A or B to the what? To the right. So you end up getting P A plus P B minus P A or B. But for you guys, if you pay attention, pay attention carefully. I'm just going to encourage you to memorize it. But be aware that it can also be written like this. Are you following that? So this is our famous addition rule or addition law of probabilities. When you write metric, it is provided. We don't put it. We don't give you formula, by the way. Maybe for measurement, because I don't want to spoil you at this stage. Your minds are still fresh. You haven't done a lot of uh, FET maths, so you need to memorize. Yes, you haven't done a lot of FET maths. Okay. Then, but you have got a question with regard to the addition rule. Yes. Or means n. Okay. So say a or b that means all all the elements in a only, all the elements that are part of the intersection a, a and what a, and also all the elements that are in b only. A or B means that you will be adding to the following whatever it is in A only, whatever is part of the intersection, whatever is part of B only. That's what A or B means. So the word or in probability means what? Add. Then the word end in probability means what is common for both. Make sure you understand that distinction in terms of language. Of the subject, or rather, in terms of the language of the topic. <coughs> All right. Okay. So let's move on. The next aspect is that's called mutually exclusive events. Okay. Now, two events are. Mutually exclusive. Okay, before I carry on. Okay. So, since I've introduced the addition rule, okay, it's important for you to know that there's a relationship between the addition rule and mutually exclusive events. And I'm going to clarify the similarities and the differences just now. So, going forward, you are expected to know what mutually exclusive events are. Right? Now, two events are mutually exclusive if they cannot happen or if they cannot occur at the same time. Like, for example, if you are driving a car, you can't turn left, then turn right at the same time. Okay? You can't turn left or right at the same time. You have to make a decision that you want to turn left or you want to turn what? Right. Alright? Let's say if it's a T-junction, okay? Just to counter what you are saying. If it's a T-junction, you can't go straight. You, you have to decide to turn left or you have to decide to turn what? Right. So what that means is the event turning left or turning right are what? Are mutually exclusive. They cannot happen at the same time. Also, if I look at, okay, let's say at our school, if it's raining on a particular day, okay, 
it can't rain and not rain at the same time. What? <laughs> okay? One has to happen. It has to rain only, or it doesn't have to what? To rain. Those two events cannot take place at the same time. Okay? So we call them what? Mutually exclusive events. Alright? So, now, mutually exclusive events have got their own identity or their own equation, which comes from the addition rule. Okay? So, if you draw a Venn diagram for mutually exclusive events, it will look like this. You have event A, then you have event B. There won't be any intersection. Okay? Because they can't take place at the same time. Okay? So if you go to the addition rule, okay, just to clarify this, just, just give me a second, I'll give you an opportunity to pop it up. So according to the addition rule, we say it's P A or B. This is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus probability of A and B. Isn't that so? Yes. Right? So if two events are mutually exclusive, this intersection here, P, A and B, it will be equal to zero. So, for mutually exclusive events, for mutually exclusive events, P, A, and B will always be equal to what? To zero. Can you pay attention? If two events are mutually exclusive, means there is no overlap. Therefore, the probability of the intersection will be equal to zero. Where hence, this formula here, the addition rule, now I'm showing you the similarity and the differences. The addition rule becomes P A or B will be equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus zero, which means this will become probability of A plus probability of B. So this is the identity or the equation for mutually exclusive events. You have to memorize. When you come to write your examination paper one, you have to know your mutually exclusive events identity. You also have to know your your addition rule. <laughs> okay. So I want you to copy. Okay, you need to copy some of the examples here. Okay, everything is there. Everything that I just explained is there.